Hey, what is going on guys? It's Chris Luck and today, awesome video for you. We're gonna be testing out this new Canon 100 to 500. Well, it's not really new, but it's new to me. We're gonna be testing the autofocus speed, the colors, the lens image stabilization, and the sharpness of this lens, comparing it to my old Sigma 150 to 600. Well, it's not old, well, it's an old lens, but it's still my lens. Every time I try to do a video, a plane wants to fly overhead. All right, well, before I start this video, I just wanna first thank Jennifer Fogelsmith. You can follow her on Instagram. She is probably one of the best wildlife photographers you can find, and she is such a sweet, kind heart. The fact she's let me borrow this $2,800 lens is, beyond me and I really do appreciate that. So when we test this out today, I'm gonna try to find this sea otter that has a baby. It's been some crappy weather and I've been pretty busy. I don't know if it's still there, but if it is, I'll be looking for that. Uh, some bald eagles, maybe I'll go look for an owl later. Um, see what else I can photograph. We'll compare it with the Sigma 150-600 as well especially for landscape photos. And you don't think of these lenses as landscape. I love photographing mountains with a zoom lens. And the problem with the 150 to 600 is, even on a tripod, I don't trust that lens under 1 400th of a shutter speed. I photographed and got okay shots before with it, but 95% of the time, that lens will have blurry shots. And I just did some quick tests around, and a 1 10th of a shutter, if I'm holding it somewhat still, comes out pretty sharp and then 140th is like sharp no matter what so i'm just already mind blown by this lens but let's go ahead and uh go find a trail to go on to and this is just my front yard here so let's go find a hiking trail and see what we can do with this thing I think the last time Angelica and I were here at this bench and this area is when I proposed to her. This is where I proposed to her and it's like my least uh, visited spot. So maybe I should uh, start coming back here more often. It's not a bad walk, especially if you stay on the coastal side. Pretty easy. No otter. Saw an oyster catcher. I don't even think I got a photo. I think I just got a video and then it flew away. What I'm going to do is later on, I'm gonna do a controlled test because I really don't feel like using my Sigma lens out here. Um, I'm gonna do a control test. I have a clock that I'm gonna photograph um, off hand, like a uh, free hand, no tripod. And we're gonna go down to see how low of a shutter speed I can go with no motion blur. And you, I think we'll be surprised how much we can do with the uh, Canon over the Sigma. But really, really, Pretty day. Almost sun's sun's almost a little too bright for me. Hey guys, well, I'm out here at Antone. Uh, shot a time lapse tonight. Took a few uh, long exposure shots handheld with the Sigma and the Canon lens. And I think I got a quarter second shot and few of them consistently. Uh, no blur, little, there's a little river waterfall thing over here. Just handheld 500 millimeters. I'm excited to get these photos on the computer and see if they are actually in focus and uh, not blurry and whatnot. This is just day one. I'm gonna try to shoot tomorrow as well. 
with this 100 to 500 and maybe we'll get some more wildlife today was pretty cool though we got some eagles uh, i did find a sea otter i didn't film that much it's hard to film when i had the 500 the 100 to 500 i did get some uh, slow motion footage testing out the um, image stabilization and earlier i started out the day with uh image stabilization mode three and it's really meant for one and two uh three is a little different i looked it up um it's not something i'd be kind of into but uh image one is or stabilization mode one is for typical shooting and stabilization mode two is for panning and shooting uh the camera's in the truck got some blue hour shots here i'm really impressed that sigma lens uh, i never want to shoot under one four hundredth so so many times even at one five hundredth they come out blurry and it's very frustrating to use this lens is a dream so far it'll be interesting to get it on the computer i do have some comparison photos but i'll do a controlled environment comparison with that clock that i told you about getting pretty chilly here i'm gonna gonna head head back before we lose all daylight clouds kind of faded out i'm gonna look at the aurora data i feel like every time i say in a video oh i'm gonna look at the aurora data uh, nothing ever happens so i'm not even gonna get my hopes up it says tomorrow night maybe but i don't know all right i'll be interested to see if i see like a fox or something on the way home and see if i can shoot it in complete blue hour maybe like 1 50th of a second at like 3 3200 iso but I doubt anything like that's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and probably see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty guys, I just got done my testing with this 100 to 500. This lens is an absolute beast. I thought I would kind of miss the 600 millimeters with the Sigma here, but I don't, I didn't even notice it. Uh, this lens is so fast, so sharp, and just so beautiful. It's light. Uh, everything about this lens is just absolutely amazing. Now, if I was Canon, I feel like most people have a 70 to 200. They should have went with a 200 to 600, and then it would have made this lens even more uh, appealing to me. After using it, it's appealed to me and this is probably the next lens I will be getting. Um, once again, I just want to thank Jennifer Fogel Smith for allowing me to borrow this lens, do this test with it. I think Jennifer knew what she was doing when she let me borrow this lens. She kind of knew I was going to end up buying it. Um, hopefully this summer I'll be able to afford it, but for now I will just enjoy with what I had and uh, I won't take this tap, uh, Sigma for granted. It Definitely has gotten me the job done over the years that I've been using it. Uh, a lot of moon shots, a lot of wildlife shots, and to me, this is all I've ever known, the Sigma. And now that I've experienced something like this, this might feel really like subpar to me. I can't forget where I came from. This lens is still a uh, good lens. It holds its value, and I'm really happy that I do have it. I'm happy that I've been able to capture so much wildlife here in Kodiak over the past few years and uh, can't wait to jump ship and grab this uh, Canon 100 to 500. All right, well, first off, I wanna just uh, say this lens is, it just feels like a lightweight compared to this lens. This Sigma is so heavy, I can't get over it. Now it's only a half a kilo difference. I think with this attached to the Canon R5, it weighed a total of 2.63 uh, kilograms. And this here was uh, 3.02. So it's not a huge difference, but when you're using it, it really feels like a big difference. Now, when actually using this Canon 100 to 500 lens, the first thing I noticed was how fast the autofocus was. I mean, it felt very snappy. This thing, I mean, it works really good with the adapter and everything. And even when I had this on the 60 Mark II, I knew that this lens just was a slower lens. It took a lot while. You can hear it working. This thing is seamless. Uh, I can't get over it. Um, sometimes I don't even think it's doing the focusing, but it is. To me, the one thing that really separates this lens 
and this lens is, this is able to shoot at 150th, even 110th, and it works good. It just works, it's sharp. I was taking landscape photos with this thing. It made me realize like, I do not enjoy taking landscape photos with the Sigma. There's a lot of compositions I like, but I have to shoot at at least one 500th of a second or there will be some motion blur somewhere in the photo. You could see by this clock test that I took here just now that the Sigma is blurry at one 100th. It's basically unusable handheld at one 100th. This thing, I actually shot a water, uh, not a waterfall, a little moving water yesterday at one quarter of a second handheld and it was pretty much motion free. There was a little tiny bit, but a quarter second handheld at 500 millimeters is absolutely insane. Considering this at one 400th is probably gonna have some motion blur, so huge difference. And the other thing that this lens has that you would think the Sigma would be better is the Sigma at 600 is 6.3, but the Canon at 500 is 7.1. And that sounds like the Sigma should win. It should have better light, but I don't think it does. I believe the Sig the Canon just has better natural lighting than the Sigma. And especially when it comes to post-processing, I feel like the Sigma is just holding me back. I feel like the colors don't match up right. Nothing matches up right. This Canon feels like any other lens that I used to edit with. It feels very smooth and uh, I can't say enough about it. Now, of course, over the years, I've really adapted to this uh, Sigma lens. I've realized to shoot landscape, to shoot wildlife, I genuinely do one 1,000th for any wildlife and I'll crank the ISO up because anything under, I do not want to risk having motion blur. I'd rather have noise in an image than motion blur. Motion blur is an instant trash can photo and unless it's something extremely rare that uh, nobody's seen before. And unfortunately, when you're editing with a higher ISO, you do lose a little bit of color. So that could be where the Canon thrives, but if they're neck and neck, the Canon still has better colors. It has better bokeh. It has better everything, and the most important, it has better sharpness. I'm gonna wrap this video up here, and overall, the Canon is the hands down winner if you're gonna compare them. To me, we're comparing apples to oranges. This thing is uh, $900 brand new, and this is $28.99, so technically this should be three times better, but I truly believe that not only is it three times better, I would say it's 30 times better. With this Canon, I feel like I have a 95% success rate of getting the right photo the first time, if not the second time. This Sigma, while it gets me the photo, I'd say it's more like a 50 to 75% success rate. It has a lot of issues, but like I said before, I'm not gonna forget where I come from. When I do upgrade to this Canon 100 to 500, I will remember this Sigma and I will leave it in the dust. Just this weekend alone, I've taken so many photos. I did, almost took only photos with this lens. Uh, last night we did have a nice northern light storm, so I wasn't using this for that. Although, maybe that could have been cool. I don't know. I'm gonna leave you guys with a bunch of photos that I've taken this weekend, and I'm gonna invite you to like and subscribe to the channel. The next video will be that Aurora storm, but until then, enjoy these photos with the 100 to 500, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.